Hello everyone! Welcome to the 8th tutorial to a beginner's guide on how to Enscape. In this video, we will be covering the video editor tool. This is a very useful tool that we can use for our presentations and walkthrough, along with our real-time renders. Here in our Enscape window, proceed by clicking this button here or pressing its shortcut key. We now have the video editor window. You can also tick this box right here to show the grid lines. Next, click either this button or this button over here to start our initial keyframe. Let me just delete this one first. Okay, so let's start by clicking this one here. Now, if you move away, you will notice that there's a camera pointing from your position at the same view that you had earlier and clicking it would take control of that keyframe. Next, let's move somewhere else and press either plus button, like so. Now that we have two keys, we can start a walkthrough by placing this play button right here. Now either wait for it to finish or press stop. Since it's taking too long, as seen here, it's gonna take 33 seconds to finish the video walkthrough. So let's stop the preview. So here in the overview of our keys, notice that if I press this button, the link is coming from the first key, while that's a, if I press this button right here, it's coming from our last key. This button gives us control on where we want to position our keys, thus why there's two of them. And if you want to put a key in the middle of anything, simply ho hover your mouse to the chains or link like so, you will notice a tooltip or what shows a camera in the position of our mouse like so. Now, let's go ahead and click it, allowing us to make a key on that position. Next, if I were to face our camera here, for example, and press refresh or update, it will use the view like so. Now, if I press escape, you will see it's facing there. And we now have five keys that we can use for our video walkthrough. Now, let's go back to the general option here in the show grid lines. If you scroll down, you will see timeline, total duration, and some movement options. We can see our overall duration of timeline here, which is now 1 minute and 40 seconds, which is too long. We can rectify that later. Next, here in the movement options, we can tick two options, which is ease in and out and shaky camera. Now, what this does is the easy in and out will slow the movement when we, re when we reach each keyframe and shaky camera adds a wobble or a bubble movement to our walkthrough. I usually just take this off since I have no use of it or find any use of these options. Next, we've got the burger icon here for options to save a video path or load an existing one. So going back to our walkthrough, if you select a keyframe like so, like this camera, you will notice that the frames here has an orange color, meaning that's the current keyframe that we're using. You can select each of them so that we can edit them or press the plus button if you want to add a keyframe in the middle of anything. Let's first go ahead in our first keyframe. Here, we've got an option to play around with it. We can either change the time of day by making it, let's say, night like so, change the focal point or even the field of view like so. Since it's daytime, we can't really see much. Let's put it back in the morning or rather in the afternoon. There. And if I were to pair with a field of view like this, it will change per frame. So if I were to press play right now, since in the first keyframe, I have a different field of view and focal point. But in the second keyframe, it's using the normal generic one. So let's give this one a try and play it. Sorry, it's taking too long. Let's edit this one. Let's change the timestamp so it will not take 30 seconds 
from the first key to the second key. Instead, let's make this 10 seconds so it will be faster there. Now, let's go ahead and start here and play. So, you will notice that, but slowly, our field of view along with our focal point is changing. Right, now, let's go ahead and stop this. So, let's do one example. Here, I will change the time of day into night. Then, here, I will change this time stamp into 20 seconds, for example, or something like this. We've got midnight here. Let's change this back to the afternoon. And back here, let's change this time stamp to something lesser. And play around with the time of day again. Lastly, for the last keyframe, since it's the last, we can change the timestamp, but we can change the time of day along with the focal point. So let's play around with this and let's get the smallest field of view like so, just you know, to play around with it. With that done, let's go back to the start and press play. Now, notice how everything changes as we've played around with it. Too bad we don't have much of a moonlight so we can't really see anything going on, but you can imagine or get the gist of it like so. Now remember this part, we added a keyframe in the middle facing the other end, so it should go back properly like so. And there we go. I think it's about to finish. Okay, and that's it. So with the final one, let's go ahead and try and export this by pressing this button right here. Now, I usually have mine in full HD. You can use Ultra HD for a 4K resolution that is up to you or do a custom. But a 1080p one should be good enough. I have mine usually at maximum. Don't use lossless or anything below it. And my frames per second is usually 60 because most smart TVs don't allow 120. But still, that is up to you. Anyway, let's do a 120 and export it. Now I have it here in downloads and let's save. Now, this might take some time for me, so I will fast forward to the end of it. And with that done, we've got the ATMB file over here. Let's give it a play. All right, here it is at 120 FPS and full HD. We've got a very good video. So for questions and suggestions, please do comment below. And if you find or enjoyed this tutorial, do support me by liking and subscribing. I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much, guys.